What's up guys, RBG here bringing you my breakdown on the latest demo trailer for Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales. I along with a few other YouTubers alerted you guys that we would most likely be getting an official gameplay during the live showcasing for the PlayStation 5. And although some were doubtful about it, we turned out to be correct. There was a ton of things that were revealed alongside the demo we got. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I wasn't expecting some of the details that were given. Like we had heard certain things, but Insomniac and Sony were being so vague with some of their statements, so that left us a little confused. But nonetheless, we're gonna to tackle everything you need to know about this game in today's video. Now before we get started on the video, I gotta give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, TubeBuddy. As a successful YouTube user, I often get questions asking what I use to get my videos tons of views, and the answer to that is TubeBuddy. This thing has helped me take my channel to the next level in ways I never imagined. It's a browser extension that helps new and experienced YouTubers grow fast and optimize their channels. I've been using this extension for years and it's constantly getting updated with new features, like the SEO tool that helps me come up with the perfect title, description, and tags to get more people to click on my videos. It even provides you with analytics besides your videos to see how much traffic your video is generating from various social media sites. The extension is absolutely free, but as a special offer we're giving a 50% discount for channels that have less than a thousand subscribers that purchase the Pro Upgrade. All you have to do is enter in the code RISINGSTARBUDDY. So if you're interested in starting a YouTube channel or taking your content to the next level, download the extension now. You can do so by clicking on this link that will be provided in the description of this video. But getting back to the matter at hand, we first have to address one of the biggest things regarding this game. When it was initially revealed as an expansion to the first game, many wondered if it would be releasing for the PS4. Something that I said in my previous breakdown video was how the game reminded me a lot of Konami's Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes. Many of you might remember that the game served as a prologue to the official sequel The Phantom Pain, and even though it was being released on next gen consoles, that being the PS4 and Xbox One, players still had the option to play on the previous gen hardware such as the PS3 and Xbox 360, and I thought that Sony should follow a similar strategy with Spider-Man Miles Morales. Not only did I feel like it would be a fair move for Sony to release a version on the PS4, it would be a smart move, because we're already getting Marvel Spider-Man 2 on the PS5 in a couple of years, and the PS4 still has a little more life left in the tank before its generation comes to an end. I got a lot of flack for suggesting this because many felt like the game was vastly different from its predecessor, but I quickly pointed out how the developer stated that Spider-Man Miles Morales was an enhanced to the first game, so the game could still run on the PS4 if they really wanted it to. And as it turns out, I was right to assume these things because it's officially been confirmed that the game will be available on the PS4 and the PS5, which is dope because this gives fans the chance to experience the game before we fully transition over to the next generation of gaming. Something that's been the biggest issue with Marvel Spider-Man is that of accessibility. Those who only had an Xbox One didn't have the luxury of experiencing how awesome the game was, and many fans stated that they purely purchased the PS4 just to play Marvel Spider-Man, so I could only imagine what it would have felt like for them if they recently got a new console just to hear that they'll have to buy another console to play the sequel of the game they already spent a great deal of money on. But thankfully, we'll all get a chance to play the game, and for those of you who have yet to play the first game and just so happen to be pre-ordering the PS5, you can now play a remastered version of it that'll be bundled with the Spider-Man Miles Morales game. It'll come in the form of a voucher code and fans will be able to experience the complete storyline to this point, which includes the remaster of the original game and all three installments of the City That Never Sleeps DLC so you can get that full narrative arc. PlayStation Blog says, and I quote, The remaster for the PS5 is no simple up res, as many of the game's arts assets have been completely updated to take advantage of the PS5 console's horsepower. You'll see better looking characters with improved hair, eyes, hair, and facial animations, including our new next generation Peter Parker. You'll also see ray trace reflections and ambient shadows, improved lighting, more pedestrians, and vehicles stretching further into the distance, and the same optional performance mode offered on Marvel Spider Man Miles Morales, allowing you to finally play the game at a target 60 FPS frame rate. We'll be supporting near instant loading, 3D audio, and the DualSense controller's haptic feedback. Lastly, we're adding three amazing new Spider-Man suits, new photo mode features, and even new trophies for those of you looking to platinum the game all over again. So yeah guys, this bundle is going to be a big deal, and if I'm reading these details correctly, the first game will almost be on par with Spider-Man Miles Morales in terms of graphical fidelity and performance. Like when you hear that they'll have a next generation Peter Parker, you know this isn't going to be your typical remaster. I was a bit apprehensive about the ultimate edition of Spider-Man Miles Morales being priced at a whopping 70 bucks, but we're essentially getting two high performing titles. And if you just want the standard edition, it'll run you 50 bucks. So yeah, we got some reasonable prices for this awesome game. 
But that's not what we're here to talk about today. What you guys are really here for is a breakdown on the latest demo trailer. Firstly, I gotta point out the level of authenticity this game has going for it, because the difference between this and the first game are night and day. Where Marvel Spider-Man has a more classical superhero atmosphere accompanied by an epic score, Spider-Man Miles Morales has a more grounded and urban vibe to complement the setting. And it sounds like it's gonna slap when it comes to the soundtrack. And I know people don't like to talk about representation because it's been forced as of late, but this game looks like it's gonna do it the right way. Since Miles wasn't the main focal point in Marvel Spider-Man, the developers didn't necessarily have to harp on his ethnically ambiguous background. Like we knew that he was half black and Puerto Rican, but there wasn't really a need to focus on that since Peter Parker was the focal point of the game. But this time around, they absolutely have to harp on it. And it's not just because of Miles' race, it's because the game will be set in the East Harlem, also known as Spanish Harlem. As soon as Miles steps out the door, you instantly see the Hispanic influences, from the Puerto Rican flags to the random civilians participating in salsa dancing. And this particular setting easily lends itself to the narrative, because as has been explained in the demo, Miles' mom is running in an election, and that in and of itself makes perfect sense. Being that she's of Puerto Rican descent, she more than likely relates to the people of Spanish Harlem. And the neighborhood is historically known for its high crime rate and drug abuse, so this could possibly be the driving force behind her campaign to make it a better place for the people to live in. But another thing you gotta appreciate is how they have our boy Miles rocking some Tims, which also hearts on that authentication I was talking about earlier. And I'd also like to point out how Miles looks like our former President Barack Obama in certain instances such as this one. I'm not sure if the design team did this deliberately or not, but it's a great homage since Obama was one of the inspirations behind creating him. But besides Miles getting more presence on screen, we now have a confirmation that his buddy from the first game was indeed Genki Lee. This character has become a prominent one within the mainstream Marvel media. Since his inception in the Ultimate Marvel comics, he's managed to leap into other forms of media like the movies. He's made brief appearances in the Into the Spider-Verse movie and the Marvel Cinematic Universe brought some of his likenesses to make their version of Ned Leeds. And now he's rumored with Miles in this game, and I'm not sure if it's just me, but he looks like he's added a few extra pounds to make him look like his comic book counterpart. Something else the developers seem to be pulling from the comics is the fact that Yankee somehow managed to figure out Miles has spider powers. In those issues, he actually covers for Miles while he's out web slinging and even encourages Miles to embrace his spider abilities. So it's gonna be cool seeing how the game showcases this partnership between them. Based on the back and forth they have, Miles is trying to find his sense of belonging in his vibrant new neighborhood. Instead of the story taking place in a bright and gloomy setting like the first game, Game, this one will be going for a more neon meets noir aesthetic, which is perfect. Given the fact that Miles has bioelectrical powers and the main baddies will be sporting this glow in the dark tech, it's the right direction to go in. Not to mention it gives off a similar vibe to the Into the Spider-Verse movie. Something fans assumed upon observation from the first trailer is that the main baddie could have possibly been Aaron Davis aka the Prowler from the Ultimate comics. He's been an integral part of Miles' origin story serving as his uncle as well as his arch nemesis, and the vibrant neon colors the villain sports in this game looks very similar to how Prowler looked in the movie. But according to Insomniac, this would be their version of the Tinkerer. This version will serve as the leader of the Underground, a high-tech criminal army that has a major beef with the devious energy corporation Roxxon and wants to steal their latest property, New Form. Many have theorized that this version of the Tinkerer could possibly be Yuri Watanabe, because for one, the character sounds very similar to how Yuri sounded in the first game. Not to mention that she was going on a very dark path near the end of the City That Never Sleeps DLC where she shoots Hammerhead in the head at point blank range, leading many to believe that she'll be assuming her anti-hero moniker, Wraith. In the comics, she utilizes elastic straps to wrap around her enemies and swing around the city of New York like Spider-Man, but the tinkerer from the Spider-Man Miles Morales game doesn't seem to possess any of those abilities. If anything, the devs could possibly be borrowing from another version of Wraith who goes by the name of Zake Dell, since they both use a polymorphic weapon that can take the form of things like whips. But we'll just have to wait and see a little more before we start drawing conclusions on who she really is. Anyway, something that seems to be a reoccurring theme with these Marvel games is the concept of a new energy source and the destruction of a bridge. We just had the Avengers introducing a new source of energy in the form of Terrigen in their game and the Golden Gate Bridge was blown up. And now we have Roxxon promising to power the entire city with a new form of energy titled New Form. But the energy is highly unstable and when it mixes with Miles' new bioelectric venom powers, it sets off an explosion on the Braithwaite Bridge. I'm not sure if Marvel's trying to tell us something or if this is all one big coincidence. Nonetheless, it showcased how Miles will be utilizing his new spider powers. And this brings us to the gameplay. Right off the riff, I gotta say that I'm getting new and old vibes from Miles' moveset. 
On one hand, the moves look distinctly different from Peter's Spider-Man. Miles is more flaily and doesn't look like he's fully mastered his powers. But on the other hand, it looks like the developers are going to be lifting a few elements from the previous game to highlight his bioelectric abilities. As soon as Miles infused his melee attacks with electric powers, it instantly made me think of the electric punch mod that comes with the electrically insulated suit. And when he launched enemies into the air, it reminded me of the suspension matrix mixed with the electric web gear, which basically allows you to lift and hold enemies in the air while being stunned for a short duration. He also looks like he's going to be able to perform powerful ground smashing moves that omit powerful shockwaves like the negative suit mod did. And I just want to clarify that I'm not trying to throw any shade or take points away from the game for doing this. If anything, this is a good thing because the first game did an excellent job of taking elements that the previous Spidey games didn't really execute properly. And the elements that Insomniac borrowed from the first game fall in line perfectly with Miles' abilities for this game. As to whether he'll have access to various gadgets like Peter did is anyone's guess. It looks like he possibly could since the head displays his web shooter counter, which allows you to stick enemies to walls. As I'm recording this video, it's been confirmed that a gravity well gadget will come in the launch edition of the game, so I'm just going to guess that he will be having something akin to the gadget system from the previous game. As far as the meters for his Venom Blast and Camouflage are concerned, I noticed that Miles had three mini bars on the side of his Venom Blast symbol, and when he would use certain electrically infused attacks, it would occasionally go down. But when he did regular attacks, it would fill back up. And the long yellow horizontal bars would deplete when he used his electrified takedowns. And the same can be said for his camouflage bar after performing a takedown while invisible. As far as the other gameplay elements are concerned, they look like what you'd expect from Marvel Spider-Man. It looks like it's going to incorporate tightly structured set pieces accompanied with the occasional quick time event to wrap things up in the most epic way possible. So yeah, everything looks to be promising with this game. The last thing I want to briefly talk about is the suits. The first alternate suit actually comes with all the bonuses of the game's launch edition, which will come with two extra suits, one which is dubbed the Track Suit. Judging from Miles' dialogue regarding his beat producing, I wouldn't be surprised if the Track Suit is somehow associated with music or sound. As for the other suit that's been blacked out, there seems to be a very viable leak that suggests that it's the Into the Spider-Verse suit. When the pre-order details went up on the official website for Spider-Man Miles Morales, it showed a very peculiar message that said Into the Spider-Verse suit. And later, this message was removed by Sony when people called on. So I think it's safe to assume that the mystery suit in question will indeed be the Into the Spider-Verse suit. And I'm expecting it to feature that cartoony aesthetic like Peter's Spider-Verse suit did. But with that, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. What did you guys think about all of this? Are you excited that the game is going to be available on two consoles as opposed to one? And what were you able to find from the trailer? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on my channel. But if you really enjoyed the video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it with all your friends and followers on social media outlets. YouTube hasn't been too kind to this channel on the algorithm side of things, so it would help out a lot if you just shared. But this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.